and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be learning about self-closing tags. Up until this point, we've used HTML tags that have the opening and then the closing, which has this slash in it. Now, there are a few elements that don't have this syntax, but they have something called self-closing tags. So let's say here between Fuji and Honeycrisp, I want to have a bit of a line break. I can use something like br here, break. And if I save this and I refresh, we have a little line break. There's also hr, which is horizontal. So you get a horizontal line, if I refresh, right through here. hr, break, just have one single element self-closing. You might also see something like this, and that is something from the old version of HTML, uh, which uses XHTML. Um, you can read up more about it on your own, but just keep in mind that with HTML5, we're just going to be using this. So obviously, on web pages, there's going to be images. So would it be nice if there was a picture of a Fuji apple here? Let's uh, let's see how we can do it. So with an image tag, and let's think about this critically. If I didn't know what an image tag is, and I wanted to add an image to my HTML file. Well, if I Google image HTML tag, again, one of the first websites that pops up is the W3 schools. And I'll show you exactly how an image tag works. If I click try yourself, you can see it in action. You can play around with it. But you can see here that an image tag is a self-closing tag. There's no closing image tag, just, just one single tag. And if I do image, and we have something called source here. And this is something called an attribute. Some HTML tags can have something called attributes, which is add special properties to the specific tag. So an attribute always has a value attached to it. And the image source, that's what SRC stands for, tells us where the image is coming from. So let's find an image of Fuji Apple. Let's go images. Oh, I like this one. Let's do view image, and it'll give us the link of where this image is. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it in here. Let's go back to our example here. We can see here that there's a few more attributes that we can add to an image tag. But for now, we can just leave it here, close the tag. You can see that sublime text adds the nice highlighting for us. And if I save this, go back to our website, and I click Refresh, I get this massive Fuji Apple. And obviously, that's, that's too big. Ideally, we can make it a little bit smaller. Again, if we go back into the example, you'll see that it has width and height. So we can actually just copy that and add it to the attributes so that we specify the width, and this is in pixels. So I save that, I refresh. And look at that, we have the Fuji Apple. It looks very, very pretty. Let's add the picture for Honeycrisp as well. I'm going to do this fast. You should be able to just copy this image. And again, we want to make it the same size as the previous one. So I'm going to leave the width and height the same. And let's find a, an image of a Honeycrisp Apple. So Honeycrisp Apple images. Well, it looks quite similar, doesn't it? And view image. Let's copy the source from here. I'm going to save that, go back to our website, and let's refresh. And look at that. We have our apples. So image tags are very, very useful. You might be asking yourself, what is the alt attribute mean? And this is something that you can actually read up on. So if you scroll down, if you look over here, you can see that alt specifies an alternate text for an image. So again, this is something that can be used by screen readers, and you can define what the image is of. So in here, the alt is smiley face. So, so that when a screen reader reads it, it says, oh, in this part of the website, there is a smiley face. Just to recap, we learned about self-closing tags, which don't require two of them, so an opening and a closing tag, just a single one. So we used BR for line break, we used HR for a horizontal line, and then we have the image tag that also has to have some attributes. So it has a source, which tells us where to grab the image from. It has a width attribute, a height attribute, 
with a value of 42 pixels and 42. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.